So yeah. welcome everybody. I hope that you are doing well. I have a very special guest, especially for all of my entrepreneurs and my people who are saying, Kamara, I am ready to buy a house. Please welcome Bruce Marks, the CEO and founder of NASA. Yay! Welcome, 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 welcome. Okay. So just to, give to you be all, here, Kamara. Thank you. So just to give you all some background, um, Bruce literally has helped thousands of people get a home. Recently, he just did a event in Newark, New Jersey, and I believe about 20 to 30,000 people were at that event. Yes. And he was really helping African-Americans and also um, Hispanics, minority community, get in um in the home buying process. So Bruce, I want to take a, step, a couple steps back for all of my people who are renting, for all of my people who are like, I never even thought of buy a house. Why is it important to own a home? Well, you know, there's a lot of ways to answer that question, but, you know, and so we are in a, a you know, we're in a housing crisis now. So now we've been, you know, this is not the first housing crisis that we've had. So if you go back to 2008, we had a housing crisis, but it's because of, you know, unaffordable mortgages, mortgages that were structured to fail. Now we have a housing crisis because we have unaffordable rents. And so, you know, so when you think about it as a as a uh, renter, you know, obviously you are not generating wealth you're, uh, for yourself, you're regenerating wealth for the landlord. And also you don't control. So you are subjected to whatever the uh, landlord wants to do. Right. So, you know, I think you look at it in two ways in terms of, I think a lot of people look at being a homeowner because you can, you can generate wealth. But I think just as important and maybe even more important is that you control your house. Yeah. You're not um, subjected often to predatory abuse of landlords who all they care about is to maximize the rent. And now we have landlords like um, uh, Blackstone, Invitation Homes, these corporate landlords who are even worse out there. Because when you think of a landlord, maybe if, if you're living in someone's house and they're the landlord or they're the owner, that's a better and more responsible landlord because they want people they are gonna take care of the homes and they're there and it's personal. But these corporate landlords are really abusive. So it's both a control of uh, your destiny, of your home, and to generate wealth for yourself, not for these landlords, who all they do is they, what these landlords do is they bring money. So, you know, they don't bring much else. It's just money. And that's not, you know, acceptable that just because they have money, they can tell you what to do. They can charge you exorbitant rents. They control a large part of your life. You know what, I think that that's really important because when you, most people, when they get out of college, they're taught, get a nice apartment. So they're paying 25, 3,000, you know, depending on what kind of job they have for an apartment. And for one to six years, I would say, they are spending their money and really wasting their money. And some of those people stay in those cities, you know, for a long period of time. I wanna go back to why you started NACA, because you are very passionate and you've been doing this, you know, you've been Bostonian of the year. I mean, you've helped, I think at this point, millions out of your, you know, 30 year tenure. So tell us, why did you start this? So I'm going to answer that, but also I want to address also uh, that the, that home ownership is not for re everybody right away. Okay. So, you know, so if you look at, you know, some of the other, uh, you know, re-rental housing, really particularly in Europe, you, you have you used to have these council states, so you can be comfortable that you can have an affordable rent there for a long time because it was owned by the city or the town or the council. So, you know, here, because you have these abusive, predatory uh, landlords, you know, that's why home ownership is so important. So, but it, it's, you gotta be willing to be in that area for a long time. Right. So, you know, as a young person, it might not be the right answer right, uh, right away. So actually it gets into why I started NACA. So, you know, my, um, my um, background is I, you know, come from a middle, upper middle class, middle class area. And, you know, but the re people that I grew up with have a sense of entitlement, you know, white sort of, uh, you know, predominantly white areas. But then, you know, when I was growing up, I, you know, had a, a you know, a number of friends who were, you know, 
people of color who didn't have the same opportunities that I did. So I'm a product of 1970s, you know, you know, the civil rights movement fighting for economic justice. So I wanted to go about it uh, from an advocacy point of view, but I wanted to learn the enemy. So I have an undergraduate in economics. I went to uh, do my MBA at, at N- NYU, New York University, uh, majoring in finance to learn the enemy on Wall Street because that's where a lot of the people went for training on Wall Street. They went to NYU and, you know, whether part-time or full-time. So I went there and then I got a job at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York to learn the enemy. So uh, uh, I went there, I was in the domestic applications area. Wow. Learned that, that's where basically, you know, any of the biggest banks in the world, because there's the district two, that's where the biggest banks were, you know, financial institutions. So I figured out, you know, they educate you to the camo analysis. You look at the capital asset management, equity, liquidity of these banks, and you figure out that every one of these financial institutions was doing something illegal. Mm. But it might not be where they were so blatant that they're saying we have racist lending practices, which a lot of them did and do. But they would go about a different way. They say it based on credit score or based on other factors. When in the fact they didn't want to lend and wouldn't lend to people of color. Right. right. So I went out. I tried to work with the nonprofits. They weren't all that you know interested. So I uh, ended up uh, you know moving to Boston, uh, working uh, you know with the Hotel Workers Union Local 26, and started there. But it was never about housing. It was always about you know, economic justice. Right. So, uh, you know, I was going to be a union organizer with the hotel workers over 26 and make a long story short. Uh, they, uh, we were, looked at the pension monies, how to invest in housing. Dominic Bizzotto was uh, the president and we did the impossible. We actually negotiated because in the union management, uh, in those negotiations, if a issue was not what's called a permissive subject of bargaining. You couldn't even talk about it. So you could bargain over wages, you can bargain over health care, you can bargain over pensions. But because housing was not a permissive subject of bargaining, you couldn't even talk about it. It was illegal because it was not uh, under the taft Act. So in 19, starting 1985, But in the 1988 negotiations, we did the impossible. It was illegal, but we did it, where we actually negotiated for a housing benefit and we got it. But there was an 18 month clock on it. So we had to go to Washington and change the Taft-Hartley Act, which had never been changed by a local union ever. And we had to do that within 18 months. And we organized on the grassroots and we got it done. And the first George Bush signed it. So I said, this is great. This is the height of what I'll ever be doing. So that now the hotel workers would be able to access the down payment and the closing costs to be mm-hmm. homeowners. Right. But but the fact of the matter is it didn't work mm-hmm. because, you know, you had predatory lenders out there who, you know, and this was, you know, we identified Fleet, Fleet Finance, one of the biggest financial institutions in the country, and they wouldn't lend in the minority community on conventional terms, but they would lend in the minority community on predatory terms. I mean, we're talking 25, 30%, 35% interest rates. Yeah. So, you know, so we identified that. So we, so we actually coined the term predatory lending. That was a four and a half year war. And it was a war because uh, fleet was a, uh, based in Providence. Uh, There was some mob connections with all that stuff. It was really crazy. It was really intense. But we got a lot of attention to it. We, you know, identified them on 60 Minutes. We, you know, made this a national campaign. And in the end, we won. And just one quick story, if I could. Um, uh, The way that we finally pushed them over after four and a half years, and it was a war, believe me. I mean, we were at their homes, we, you know, we, you know, targeted Terry Murray, their CEO, to hold them personally accountable. So the last thing that that pushed them, I think, over the edge was that they were having an event sponsored by the Harvard Business School. 
and it was for the financial executives throughout New England. So we stole the name of the Harvard Business School graduates. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, 35, 40 of us, you know, went in there for that breakfast. And we said that we were the Harvard School, you know, graduates. We took their names, got in there, and we shut it down. So, you know, we, you know, scattered all the tables and we said to Terry Murray, we're shutting you down. This is, you ain't going to have this meeting. And so what he said was that everything we said about fleet finance was absolutely correct, that he was going to settle this within two weeks and meet with us and get it done. So in the end, we, after we won that war, mm -hmm. what we got was an $8 billion settlement focusing lending for low to moderate income, particularly um, particularly minority home buyers. Uh, they settled all the, the lawsuits out there, including with uh, Roy Barnes, who becomes uh, the governor of Georgia. And we got a $140 million mortgage product. No down payment, no closing costs, no fees. And the last thing Terry Murray says to me, is he says, you know, I've given, you've gotten everything that you have demanded and that you're never going to be an activist again because it's so complicated, it's so difficult, it's so regulated in the mortgage industry that I've given you enough rope to hang yourself. That's what he said. Because in a sense, he was right in some ways because this industry is so regulated. But what he didn't realize is he gave us full control. So with that $140 million and the best mortgage out there, we now have $20 billion dollars of this one mortgage product, $20 billion of the best mortgage in America, and we control the process. Okay. And we have 15 billion with Bank of America. So, you know, that's how it started. And so it really has started from fighting and continues to be the fight for economic justice with home ownership as the core piece of that. Well, First of all, I want to say you would definitely be classified, as John Lewis was saying, as good trouble. Because in order for you to go in the meeting, you had to strategize. And it was about timing as well. And you also won the case, right? Um, I want to ask you, because when we talk about home ownership, you know, in this generation, people always refer back to wealth, but it also is about control. We see, especially in the South, because I did grow up in Atlanta, well, outskirts of Atlanta, just say Georgia. But you would see people literally getting kicked out of their homes, right? You would see them getting kicked out of, you know, um, I would say, you know, apartments. And they might, depending on, you know, the time frame, they didn't have a lot of time, you know, to even gather their things. So, you know, we would see just, you know, maybe going downtown, but people's actual stuff would just be thrown out in on the yard. And, you know, people talk about it in city council meetings, you'll see it on the news, oh, well, they need to own their home. You know, if something happens with their house, the same thing would happen. I want to ask you with with NACA, what are some things that or some some guidelines that you all work with? Um, I guess the people who apply to prevent those things from happening. So, so we've been, you know, I started NACA 38 years ago. So it's both. So we help both home buyers and homeowners. So you know, during the mortgage crisis, we were the major organization out there helping homeowners save their homes. And so we did that for five, six years. And we helped over 500,000, over half a million homeowners save their homes where we, were, where we were, you know, modifying their mortgages. So people would come in and they, they'd have mortgages that were structured to fail. So when I say people had mortgages that were structured to fail, what that means is that, you know, before 2008, they had a mortgage payment that they could afford. Right. But then starting in 2008, that mortgage payment would double or triple. So if I had an affordable mortgage payment of $1,000, it would go to $2,000 or $3,000. So it was structured to fail. So it wasn't the fault of the homeowners. It was that they that the system, both the lenders, the servicers, the investors, and the government were putting mortgage people in mortgages that were structured to fail. So we were able to do what we would do, what we call modification, to bring down the interest rate to as low as two percent, and sometimes reduce the outstanding principal. So homeowners would be able to save hundreds, sometimes a thousand or two thousand dollars a month in their mortgage payment to save their homes. Right. So we did that, helped massive numbers of people. 
doing that. We had 144, 144 of these events where we get 20, 30, 40,000 people coming and we would do this massive events. And we did this um, throughout the country. Now on the home buying, the home buying process, we're doing these big events as well. So when I say to somebody, if you're at risk of being homeless mm-hmm. or you're at risk of being um, foreclosed on, then NACA is the place to be. So you come to the events, you go to one of our 47 offices around the country, or you do the remote counseling, because we set up the best solutions out there for home, both homeowners to save their homes and home buyers to achieve affordable home ownership. So, you know, when you think about it, what are the major four um, issues, barriers that prevent someone from achieving affordable home ownership? So the first one is, you know, people don't have, people work hard, but it's tough to save. Yep. So so it's tough to save. So the NACA solution is no down payment and no closing costs. Mm -hmm. Number two is that you have uh, restrictive underwriting based on one's credit score. But that credit score might be low because you did not make your medical payments. Well, not making your med- medical payments is not a reflection of whether you're ready for home ownership. It just says we have a dysfunctional, unaffordable healthcare system. So the NACA solution is we focus on the last 12 months of payments that someone controls. So you exclude unaffordable bills and things like that. And you never consider one's credit score only their payment history that they control. Um, number three, unaffordable terms. The NACA solution is always the lowest fixed rate. So, you know, and so at a below market. So today's rate is uh, 6% for a 30 year, it, and it's 5.5% for a 20 year or a 15 year fully amortizing mortgage. And the last is you deal with racism and biases. Yeah. So the NACA solution is, you NACA qualify, basically pre-approved that home buyer. So they become a desirable customer for real estate agents, sellers, and investors. And we've done over more than 20 years, we've done over 75,000 mortgages. 93% are to people of color. And we have a foreclosure rate of 0.00012 about one hundredth of one percent. That's probably the best performance in the industry bar none. So we've demonstrated that NACA is the place to be, but if you are a home owner at risk of foreclosure or your home buyer wanting an, an affordable mortgage. This is really good, especially for my, because what I work with is a lot of mid-level professionals. So I have a, a group called Digital Career Opportunities Worldwide. And that helps people get a job. I've had it since 2018. Now a lot, because we've all grown together, it has like over 5,000 people, but because we've grown together, now they're considered mid-level. So they are talking about, hey, Kamar, I want to buy a house, but maybe this job that I'm in, either A, they don't have enough money, or B, they don't even know about the home buying process. I wanted to ask you, because what you just said is a guideline of what people need to follow and then also your requirements. But do you think the current um, mortgage lending system is predatory? Just if somebody would go to the bank, see what they qualify for. Or you (laughs) go to the bank, see what they qualify for because the mortgage is 15, 20, or 30 years. Do you think that's that is predatory? Do you think they're overpricing the houses? What are your thoughts? So, so if you were to go to any of the banks and you say, look, what is your 30-year rate or what's your fixed rate? They won't tell you. What they'll say is put your information into our system. Mm -hmm. And then they'll spit out what is the rate. But then you say, well, I don't, how are you really, really determining what is my interest rate? Oh, it said, well, we have an algorithm. And then you say, well, you know, what is your algorithm? Oh, then they say, trust us. Well, you can't trust these banks or you can't trust people in the financial industry or in the mortgage industry. There's more criminals in the mortgage and the real estate industry than any other industry. There's more fraud and abuse in this industry than any other industry that exists. So the fact of the matter is, is that everybody is out there to rip you off. Mm-hmm. But then 
how about NACA? Why is NACA one's, you know, one's trusted advisor? Because when we do the workshops and we, that's the first step, you do a home buyer workshop. We ask everybody, hey, raise your hand if you think it sounds too good to be true for what we're NACA is doing. No down payment, no closing costs, no fees, that below market fixed rate. People raise their hands. Then we, then we ask people, raise your hand if you heard about NACA from family, friends, coworkers, and neighbors. Mm-hmm. And everybody raises their hand. Trust it. And, and so that means, you know, we don't market NACA. People tell other people, if you want affordable home ownership, you come to NACA. So the word, particularly in the communities of color, is if you want affordable home ownership, you come to NACA. So I can only say that NACA is an absolute success in June of 2019, because we did uh, a huge uh, event at um, the world the world's resort center in Queens, New York. We had over 20,000 people come, and virtually 100% people of color. We're open to everybody, but you know the word is out with no marketing and no outreach. Everybody heard about NACA from someone they trusted. Right. And then we keep doing that in Chicago, Los Angeles, St. Louis, around the, around the country, and it's word of mouth. And we just did one, as you were talking about, in Newark, where we had over 25,000 people. Again, no outreach. Again, word of mouth. That's the best reflection of the organization. I like this because even when I was doing my research, numbers, they don't lie. And when you can pack out, just going to be honest, uh, when you can pack out a 30,000 room after COVID of Black and Hispanic people, and they are coming for home ownership, that means that you have a very high track record of success. So that's one of the things that drew me to you. Another thing is that you are, actually your company is here to help people and also debunk a lot of the myths that are going on about, oh, you can only buy a home if you have X, Y, and Z. You said, no, it actually can be a more simpler process. You just need the right people to help you out. Before, um, because I know you are a busy person, but I want you, because you're in 47 states, correct? Uh, We're in all 50 states. We're in all 50 states, okay. So I wanted to know, when is the next, when is your next big event? What can people, you know, look forward to? Because um, I mean, you just packed out a 30k house in Newark. So, 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 but but let me take a step back for one thing that uh, you'd said, and that is, we're not really doing something that is new. We're doing it new when we're focusing in on people who've been subjected to systemic racism. Mm-hmm. That is, but when you look at the no down payment, that's what built the white suburbs after World War II with the no down payment VA mortgage. Okay. And it was the white suburbs, because some of, of color, as you know, they couldn't access those mortgages and they couldn't buy in those areas. So we're saying, let's take that same concept and build on that and make it even better with no closing costs, no fees, at a below market fixed rate. So, you know, that's what we're building on. And remember back then we did character-based lending. Mm-hmm. Now, character-based lending was a euphemism for only to white people. But, you know, but that concept of looking at people's individual circumstances has merit. So we've done that. So that's what we, when we won that campaign against Fleet, uh, you know, we control this, we we, are, we control this process. So yes, we're going to have uh, an event. It will, the next one is going to be July 28th, 29th and 30th. It will be in Conyers, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. But you know what we're going to have there? We're going to have the NACA home. So we're building modular homes. We're building these beautiful homes that often go to millionaires and billionaires like Elon Musk, who owns a modular house, and these millionaires have these fancy modular homes. But we're building them for working people, for low and moderate income buyers. And we're making them affordable, beautiful homes. So we're going to have a model there so people can see it. And, you know, these homes, like the ones that we're going to have, the one we're going to show in uh, just outside of Atlanta in Conyers, it's going to be about $120,000, 14 square feet. 
three bedrooms, two baths, beautiful kitchen area, living area, and all that. So that means that someone who will have a mortgage payment of around $900 a month with no government subsidies. You know, add on that, you're talking about less than that. And so that's what we're doing. And what we did in Newark, and we're doing it in, you know, Rockdale County, Georgia, and in Lima, Ohio, and around the country is the $1 program. Mm -hmm. And what's the $1 program? That's a program where the city, which owns a lot of land, and they own, you know, they own a lot of vacant lots, they own a lot of vacant housing, abandoned housing. They're going to sell those to NACA qualified home buyers for $1, for $1. And then we're going to finance the renovation of um, that vacant home wow. or the new construction. So on the new construction, you can put a NACA home in there that's right. really affordable. Or for the vacant home, you can you know, you can renovate that and have a really affordable mortgage, and a zero mortgage payment because if it's a multifamily, you've got tenants paying for a lot of portion of the mortgage. So, but I want to be clear: you don't have to come. We want you to come to the NAC event because we can get through the whole process in one day. Remember, it's a four-step process. It's you do a workshop, step one, upload your data and your documents, step two meet with a NACA, NACA counselor, step three, and go to NACA underwriting, step four. Get that done in one day. But if you go to you know NACA's website at you know NACA.com, NACA.com, you can start the process and do this anywhere in the country. And you know to do it, it just takes longer, but you'll get the same high quality counseling. And remember, NACA is the largest HUD certified counseling organization in the country. There's 1,700 counseling agencies. We're one. We do about 30% of the counseling in this country. Okay. And frankly, we probably, we do it better than anybody else because it's all documented counseling. So let me ask you, because you also have a virtual component as well. I know people can do things online. They can also call. It's just not an in-person event. Because you have, of course, I've seen Facebook groups of thousands of people in these groups. YouTube videos about people getting these houses and then you all actually walk them through the process. I like what you said that you would say probably, you know, 50s, 60s, early 70s. The housing, um, this even access to housing is very restricted for African-Americans. And now still Blacks are just catching up with this home, home ownership. You still even look at your 30 you know, 40 years behind of their white counterparts. It was one time that um, somebody had gave me an analogy and they said that, say that you're just in the country, I'm from Georgia, so I can say this, but a white family could start their son or their daughter off with a mobile home, but they would have more equity than the black person five, six years down the line. So I think that home ownership is very, very important even now. And I also was reading something that, you know, you have foresight and insight because you look at the stats and you can kind of predict what is going to happen. What do you think, like with the current climate now, they, you know, say inflation, things are going down, people are getting laid off, but there's still opportunity. Where do you think that things are going to be in like the next five years for the housing market? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think in the sense that uh, uh Black home buyers have ever had the real opportunity to be to 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 be homeowners on scale. Mm -hmm. So I think you know. So we're showing that we're open to everybody, but obviously we focus in uh, on home buyers, people of color who've been prevented from achieving affordable home ownership. Mm -hmm. So we've got a model out there that we're expanding and we are growing. But now we're also in the rural communities. So when we did this massive event in Atlanta last year. Um, um, uh, um, Mayor McCardle from Hobson City, Alabama came and she said, you got to do this in the rural communities. Yes, you're doing a lot in Atlanta and Chicago and Los Angeles and Boston around the country, but you got to come to the rural communities, which we were not, didn't have a real strong presence in. So I was invited down to meet with uh, a number of the mayors at the Black uh mayor's conference for alabama uh we and then what we did was we did 19 events each one for four days 
at the same time over the MLK holiday. We did this, you know, you know, this year. And so now we're we're doing this not just in the urban centers, but we're doing it in the rural communities um, in this country. So, you know, I don't look, I mean, I've done this for, you know, I've done this for close to 40 years. So I never really say what is going to happen in, you know, in, you know, five years, not to mention two years, because, you know, I couldn't imagine that NACA would be where we are today. Okay. And I have the best job in this country because, you know, I go around. So if I go through the airport, you know, and you have my shirt on people. I always get stopped every time if I'm going, you know, on Amtrak or going around, you know, you know, I'm in I'm in Washington. I'm, you know, crossing, you know, crossing the street right by the Capitol. This car stops honking the horn and stops all the traffic and rolls down the window and says, you know, I'm a NACA homeowner. Thank wow. you. So and that happens all the time. And we have an unbelievable staff. We have over 600 staff people work really hard. So when you come to an event, people are working. The NACA staff is working from 730 in the morning till past midnight. I mean, because and, you know, because this is what the staff does. Unbelievably dedicated. So, yes. I mean, we want to make and we are making the NACA standard, the national standard. And we're also we're doing loans out there for small business owners mm -hmm. where, you know, where you can get a small business loan for three mm percent. -hmm. And we're doing that, you know, economic justice loans. So, you know, and you know, buy a house and you can renovate it. For homeowners, you can actually refinance on NACA's Best in America mortgage and get money for the renovation. And, you know, for someone with a Section 8, someone with a housing choice voucher Section 8, they can use that Section 8 for the mortgage payment and basically get the whole pay, the whole piece paid off in less than 20 years. So you're going from virtually no wealth to hundreds of thousands of dollars of wealth. And so we're in a unique position where we can change how lending gets done. And we are in this country, not by what we're saying, but what we're doing. Yep. Yep, what we're doing. Bruce, I want to say thank you. You well. are a blessing. You are so helpful. I mean, your name is literally going down in history. And this generation, with all of the faces that people see scrolling on social media, when they can recognize you and recognize a logo and say, hey, I'm a part of that, we're doing it. So, I mean, I look forward to working with you again, seeing what else that we can do. And we will talk soon. And if people want to reach out further, what can what can they do? Of course, they can go to the website. But if they want to get involved, I know you said you have over 600 offices. Are you currently hiring? How does that work? Oh, absolutely. So, and they can they can call. So they can go to naca.com or call us at 425-602-6222. Uh, we're hiring, you know, the whole in the lending industry, they're laying off a lot, lenders going out of business, we're hiring. So go to our website and apply for, frankly, the best job in this country as a housing counselor or as a real estate agent out there. And also volunteer, you know, we have three and a half million members, three and a half million members. So, you know, and we require all of our members to be registered voters if they're legally able to do so. And so we're a powerful organization grassroots so please go to our website to become a homeowner the best terms out there often less than you're paying in rent apply for a job at naca.com and volunteer and you know as good as it's been over the last 38 years the best is yet to come so thank you certainly appreciate it it is. Will you stay on with me? Thank you all sure. so much. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Our channel is growing. Again, if you want to be a homeowner, even if you are living in an apartment right now and you're saying, come on, what do I need to do to prepare? I want you to visit NACA. And also, I want you to connect with Bruce. I will see you later and have a great one. Thank you.